This red meat plant in the middle, I built it in 07. And in there we can slaughter cows, hogs, sheep, goats, rabbits. That's the poultry plant. I built it in 10. And in there we can slaughter chickens, turkeys, geese, guineas, ducks, anything with feathers. That's uh, uh, employee housing. That, that building down there was my first restaurant. Now it's value added uh, products. We uh, jerky, rendering lard, tower, fruit vegetables, pickles, jam, anything that we do like that is, is we do in there. Both of these are USDA inspected. They got separate establishment numbers. There was a USDA inspector in each one from 7.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. So a lot going on back here. That tan building back there is the, uh, the backside of it is our order fulfillment center for our online sales. There's a, a six containers sub-zero in there. And there's a bunch of folks in there picking and packing orders to come online. And that, that we really like that. Now that, that, that young man right there pushing that cart, pushing two of them, the hide will go in that blue drum and the eviscerate will go in that little stainless steel. And uh, uh, the blood will go in that stainless steel cabinet between me and that uh, wheel loader there. The, the blood, that's a, that's a digester, and it turns that blood into liquid organic fertilizer. Think about blood meal, but we don't take the moisture, we don't go to the expense. We, we could spend a lot of money taking the moisture out and have blood meal, but we use liquid because I use it all on my farm. We generate about uh, nine tons of what they call packing plant waste a day. That would be eviscerate, gut fill, heads, feathers, whatever's not marketable. <clears throat> that goes on that yellow dump truck and uh, we compost it. We got a, a huge composting operation. Uh, I don't sell compost. You got to go through a lot of permitting and I don't want to sell it. And I make ugly compost. It's real good. It's not, you know, we don't, I don't, I'm not marketing it. So I use it, I'm, I'm my own only customer. I could spend three times as much on it and make it pretty and sell it. But then, you know, I'd, I'd probably barely recover my cost. And when and I, I put it, we put two tons of acre on every acre every year and it is, whoo, it's good. It's really good. What, it's uh, bones. what carbon are you using? Uh, what carbon? Uh, either peanut shells or wood mulch. What, and I've never bought a pound of carbon in my life. We offer people the opportunity to dump here. I mean, not, I'm particular what I let them dump, but uh, we, uh, that's what we use. And I don't have a compost turner. I, I do it with a, a, a big yellow loader. You know, I don't, uh, if I sold it, I'd need to buy a $100,000 compost turner to make it look nice. Mine, it's mine's clumpy, cloudy. It's inconsistent in uh, analysis, but it's all good. And, it, and you know, if I, if I swing it out of bounds a chunk that big, it's all right, it's fine. Yep. Uh, there's a bone grinder that's not working today. And so you know, there'll be skulls in it, uh, or femur, big old femur bones. A lot of uh, bits and pieces that we used to not be able to monetize, we found markets for. Uh, we built a uh, dehydrator back there. We built it ourselves and uh, dehydrate organs, uh, esophaguses, penises, tracheas, tails, ears, snouts, whatever. And uh, that's, that is a really good business for us because it costs... For pet food? Yeah, uh, pet treats. Yeah. You get pet food, you regulated by FDA. And pet treats, and I, you know, we, don't, we don't sell a complete pet food. You know, we sell pet treats, and, and, and it's fine. And it's fine. Uh, FedEx uh, is a, uh, that's the online. They bring us one of those every day, and we'll uh, we got a little yard truck. We'll p pull the full one out and put the empty there and pack it. Uh, uh, dry ice, and ship. Uh, that little building, the old tan building, through there with two air conditioners sticking out the side is our egg, uh, there's a machine that washes, candles, and sorts eggs. It takes two people to run it. They pick up eggs every morning and uh, 
clean them up out there and sell them. Uh, we got a, 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 a problem. There's a lot good about having your a packing plant out here in the country on your own land all the way around it, neighbors and whatnot. But uh, the problem is the wastewater. Uh, we got about over $300,000 involved in the wastewater system. And, uh, uh, and it, you know, the, 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 not the brown water, the, the wash water. All these buildings, you know, so USDA inspected, got to be washed. We use the organic soaps and goes in that uh, wastewater treatment plant. We plant a lot of trees. Uh, we we uh, usually spend about $100,000 a year planting trees. Uh, the labor and the uh, tree don't cost much. Protecting them from ruminants costs a lot. You know, if, you, if you're putting something around them, we, we, we don't kill it. We, we don't plant pine trees in streaks. I got some of that that I bought, but I, I, I hate I hate pine plantations. So I've learned what to do with them, and I'll show you. So it's the deer that you have to protect the trees from? The room, uh, cows, sheep, oh. hogs. I said ruminant hogs, too. You got to keep the cows off of them. The, uh, that building, you barely see that galvanized building, is a 50,000 watt solar voltaic array that uh, used to provide about half the power for the building. We've grown, so it, it's not that much anymore. And we plan to put some more in, but, you know, uh, cash is always tight, and we've got a lot of projects we want to do. So we have to be very judicious about, I mean, if, if, uh, we got a long list of stuff we want to do. But we gotta you know, be very careful about what we jump on. Those uh, buildings, that mishmash of different buildings you see out there, are uh, brooders, different different renditions of uh, brooders. We don't have a hatchery. We buy one day old chicks and keats and ducklings and goslings and poults. We get three or four thousand a week. And they bring them to us, and we brood them in there for about three weeks with LP gas to get feathers on them. And then we put them out in the pasture. I'll show you. Who are you getting? Uh, whoever we can. I mean, the hatcheries. No, no, well, there, there's not that many. There's a, I, you know, uh, I, the name's not coming up right now, but there's about. Murray. Yeah, Murray. The ducks from Murray, I think. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I'll see one of our poultry guys, I'll get him to tell you, but uh, we got standing orders with them and, and they bring them and, uh, go ahead, Joe. Any questions? I, I, I hear real answer questions and try to think what you want to hear. You, you said the wastewater, so, so that you have to uh, put it through a, like a bioreactor or something to Six, six five thousand gallon tanks in series. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Six. We put those microbes in the, in, the, in there to break it down. Why, why can't you just spread that water out of the field? They won't let you. EPA. <laughs> I got a. Uh, this is what they'll let me do. I got a what they call a land application permit from EPA, and this is what you got to do to to get it where you can put it out there. Oh. So a, a cow can poop on the grass, but you can't take that stuff and put it on the grass. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. No so sense. my my daddy, my daddy was a very smart man, a very successful man, didn't have a lot of education. He used to say, so let me see if I understand what we're going to do here. We're going to pump good water out the ground and shit in it and pump it back <laughs> in the ground. Is that, is that what we're going to do? <laughs> My dad's a smart man. He also said, all my life, we shit in the yard and eat in the house. I got to be an old man, we shit in the house and eat in the yard. Uh-oh. Um, when do you start, uh, how long will your grasses are now with this high organic matter? Are they lasting before you start um, making that's, hay? And that's, Situational. That, that's a good question. Uh, when when do you start feeding hay? So that the, the the farm, the home farm, or the whole, all this land we're gonna look at today, this is right here is uh, 3,200 acres. It's 
divided up into right out 150, 140 something paddocks, about 30 acres a piece ish. So obviously, some of them ain't quite that big, so the roots ain't gonna work out, but it's most of them, none of them's over 30 acres. And we rotate them every day, like I told you. And uh, normally, with this warm season grass, we're on a 42 day rotation. That's just what it worked out to be this year. <laughs> And uh, I knew that was one of mine, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, we'll rotate them until the grass quits growing, which will probably be about the middle of end of October. And then we'll put them in one place where I think needs it the most. And then we'll hay bomb them. I'll feed them hay on the ground. I'll waste it. I got a real, I'll tell you about my hay deal in a minute. We got a pretty good deal on hay. Uh, we plant every acre, every year. I got a John Deere 1590 grain drill, no-till drill. That every acre every year with a, a, a cool season mix a cereal, probably rye, wheat, oats, ryegrass, dicot radish, and crimson clover. And we got a uh, white clover that comes back. So we got to, uh, I, I can graze pretty much 10 and a half months a year. When do you actually start grazing, more or less, uh, your cool season? Again, it's situational, but we usually, we usually start February. Uh, it's, when I start grazing, it's not ready to graze, but I got to get around. So, I, you know, I, you lead it like a dove. You know, yeah, yeah. If I wait, if I wait till the first is ready, it's behind. So you know, it's just, so that's that's very management intensive, very soon. So this that's that's my landline. This is a uh, hunting property owned by a very successful attorney, and it's his private sanctuary. It's pristine. It's beautiful, and I enjoy having it here to look at. I can't afford to do that, but I enjoy having it. It's interesting. These three wildly different management systems, recreational property, grazing property, industrial farm property. 30 years ago, all operated just alike. So I've had the education and benefit of watching the succession of this land evolving over the last 25 years. And it's just been a, and I, I count that as being my greatest the greatest education contribution I've had. That, that, that money my dad spent at the University of Georgia was not well spent. I say that to this group. The dean of the Ag College is coming here today. He's going to be up here. And uh, that's that's pretty unusual. We, uh, we you know, land grant universities don't, this is not the way they farm. And I'm very pleased he's coming to see us. He's a new guy. And I hadn't met him yet. Um, when you plant, do you plant over, you know, everything, or you mow first and then plant? Uh, I probably graze it first. I, I, it I, 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 would, I would mow. I usually don't have that much. You know, I, we we do a little mowing, but I'm very judicious with it. Mowing's expensive, and uh, you know, I, I, I'll mow, I, you know, I, there's, there's times when you mow. This old hay barn, nice hide barn, that's hides salted down. We tell you, we kill about 100 cows a week, 40 sheep or goats. Hides come down here, bury them in salt, we do whatever to do with them. This is our mechan uh, carpenter shop. We got a three-man carpenter crew. A three-man uh, fencing crew, a three-man mechanic crew, and a three-person landscaping crew. They're not all—they're not all men, but uh, they everybody's got a little place they work out of. That's where they work out of. Yeah. Planted all these trees here. Yeah. 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 I don't use uh, compost tea is the question, and compost tea is good. 
I don't do that because I got so much compost. You know, compost tea is great for extending the compost as much as I got. I, I don't think so. It would be good to do. It's just. That's good, that's good, that's good thought. Uh, uh, eagle. Last time I was here you had an issue with your eagle. Uh, no, we had never seen an eagle on this place. I don't believe my daddy ever saw an eagle. He was dead before that. I never heard him talk about it. But uh, we put chickens on the ground in 2010 and the eagle showed up year two later, more and more and more, and they were devastating for a long time. <laughs> we finally figured out how to handle them, I tell you a minute. That's our corrals over there. We used to cowboy, and all the cowboys died or got old and fat. And, uh, so now we, we are building this uh, hydraulic, you know, this is this, this, this pretty, you don't, you don't have to be a cowboy. So the, uh, the eagles were literally eating our butter. I mean, they were going to put us out of chicken, the poultry business. And we finally figured out, and we had guardian dogs, but the eagles, the guardian dogs are nocturnal. They're great at night when the sharp-toothed predators are out. In the daytime, they go to the woods, go to sleep. So uh, they weren't doing any good. So we finally started, and I, I didn't put fencing around my chicken, you know, my, my poultry. I, so I put fencing around it, put a dog in there, and then we, it, it got much better. We, we lose a small amount of uh, birds and aerial predation, but it's nothing like it was before we figured it out. What breed of garden dog? Breed of garden dog, good question. We started out with uh, Pyrenees, got some Akbosh, Anatolian Shepherds, and everybody's intact. And I can't tell who breeds who. You know, this, this, this is many generations ago. What we got now is an amalgamation, but they, they're good. I, I, they're fine. Are you selling? Are you selling? Are you selling? <laughs> I don't have enough. I mean, we use them. You know, we, uh, you know we, they're out here loose. They get run over, the, you know, things happen to them, and we, we, you know. How do you do with uh, feeding the dogs and the chickens? I dump raw meat out there for the dogs. I dump chicken feed for the chickens. You know, we got a you know, packing plant that takes something like neck bones right. and things that are not that are highly marketable. Let them, let them work for it.